We are looking at the Terran Adventure sandals, a very rugged pair of running and hiking sandals that I've had my eye on for quite a long time. And honestly, gave me a little bit of buyer's remorse when it came to hiking in Chacos for so long. But was that remorse justified? Stay tuned to find out. And let's get to a better spot to run. All right, much better. Got the running clothes, got the double stroller, and we have the Bedrock Karen Adventure Sandals, which are Bedrock's most basic adventure sandal. Hello, my name is Nick. I'm into minimal style running, sandal running, and I'm trying to make these videos and comparisons to help you make a better choice when it comes to your minimal style footwear and sandals. If you're interested in that kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification, help that YouTube algorithm and grow this tiny channel. It's greatly appreciated. And Quick side note, Bedrock did not send me these. I purchased these with my own money and all these thoughts are my own. So we are going to get into the overall specs of the Bedrock Karen Adventure Sandal. This is Bedrock's most basic option. And starting out with the outsole, we have a Vibram XS Trek Megalith outsole. I think it's Megalith, something like that. I'll put, try and write it down in the video later, we, which is very aggressive uh, outsole. A lot of fun, great on wet terrain and dirt and everything else. We have the minimal style footbed, which is definitely firm. Holding your foot down is gonna be their polyester or nylon webbing lace system. That's definitely very intuitive, very nice to lock your foot down. Easy to take the sandals on and off, but also offers a lot of security. This is gonna come in at a very beefy 14 millimeters and my men's size 10 weighs at 8.2 ounces per sandal so these compared to things that i have been running in are not minimal however that doesn't mean that they're not a lot of fun and i'm finding wearing these i'm actually enjoying it quite a bit on these runs it's it's been quite enjoyable and i think you might like it too there is however one thing that bugs me about these sandals a lot So we're probably a little over a mile in here and this Vibram XS Trek outsole is really holding up well on pavement, on wood here. It's not raining today or wet, but I did get a chance to use these in some wet grass, moving some heavy things and I felt incredibly secure. Big positive and I am honestly really loving these. I thought they would feel worse, kind of like running in a trail runner on pavement. Sometimes that feels awful and super uncomfortable. You can feel all the knobs and the spikes or whatever's underneath. But on these, I'm not having that issue. It feels firm. I can tell that I'm high off the ground, but it feels pretty good. And grip with these, no issue. 
so far and they seem to be holding up the tread on the bottom i haven't ripped off any chunks or anything yet so i'm definitely enjoying that So we're taking a stop at the park here. And these are still initial, ah! All right, so we stopped at a park here for a quick play session. And these are still initial impressions, but it is a hot day. I'm sweating pretty good. And I can tell these footbeds underneath on this Karen is definitely gonna be tougher and it's gonna require some getting used to it feels grippy I'm not slipping around even though I'm super sweaty right now but I will say I'm starting to get a little bit of a hot spot under the ball of my foot on my left foot I don't think it'll be too much of an issue but I can see these taking some time to break in a little bit and your feet to adjust to the pattern there's like a pyramid triangle kind of pattern on there that provides some grip which Again, grip is great, but definitely a little extra wear and tear going on. Okay, so lastly, let's touch on the laces here. These laces feel really good. I thought they'd be stiff just because of how tight and short they are and how tight the stitching is together but they actually feel really good they're surprisingly flexible and move very naturally with your foot also this part right here this little triangle if i can get it to focus there we go i thought that was going to be stiff and a piece of plastic that is actually a uh a paracord or something like that so it's soft right there kind of like what's between the toes and it feels really good right there. So good airflow, even though the webbing is wide, no hot spots or any issues there. I'm definitely happy with the materials that Bedrock chose here. And it keeps you on the sandal, it keeps you locked in and you feel very secure. I will say too, these sandals, more up and down along this bone of your foot, that webbing goes up. And that's compared to other sandals that normally when there's a toe post, it'll go this way more lateral. But on these, that's not the case, but that's okay. It seems like that strap is happy to be more vertical up that first digit right there. Um, it works well. So if you're worried about the angle or anything of those straps, don't be. It works really well. All right. We're gonna wrap up this video on the Bedrock Karen Adventure Sandals. Originally, I planned to do this sitting down at a table, but I just don't have that kind of time. So we're gonna talk about it on the trail, starting out with the outsole. If you're looking for a very aggressive outsole, you really need something that's gonna dig into trails, gravel, even if you're in the city, maybe you have some really gravelly sections or um, areas with a lot of broken glass or debris. Uh, these are going to be a great option for you. They really eat it up. And honestly, compared to all the other sandals I've talked about on this channel, these are in a league all their own. They're just so much thicker and they really eat up the ground and you're going to be very protected from anything that could really damage your feet. All right, we're back. Baby's quiet a little bit. So... Big downside of these is gonna be the silhouette. So these are a super narrow sandal. If you've ever at any point in your life said, wow, these are really skinny shoes, you're probably gonna think these sandals are skinny. I've been running in ultras and sandals probably since 2020, 2021, so my foot's a lot wider these days. And I find that I am falling off the edge of these sandals, and that can be pretty irritating at times. So I'm, the end of my toes are definitely feeling the ground and curling around the edge. Uh, so I wish they were a little bit wider, a little bit squattier. I think that'd be really helpful. 
Next, we're gonna talk about the footbed. So I have a big love-hate with this footbed, love-hate relationship, where I love it because these little pyramids or whatever is on the footbed are super grippy. They really hold you on the sandal. But I have a hate side because these have been the worst blisters. I've had them, the ball of my foot, in a long time. Now, I was able to keep wearing the sandal and adjust my stride, but they are definitely wearing a good <laughs> good spot in through my, my, uh, my feet on both sides, right and left, worse on my left. If you have very sensitive feet, I could see these being pretty tough in the beginning. I'm also a heavy sweater, so that might be part of it. I think if I was only hiking in these and using them to walk about town, I don't think I would have an issue. And I really think it's because I was running in these right out of the gate that that happened. I was able to adjust and that's great, but it's definitely something to note that these will probably take some break in time. So if you're desperate and on a trip and all you have is these, just be prepared that there, there might be some tenderness going on there. These are the flat footbed. They do have a 3D version. I went with the flat one because it was cheaper and then also because I heard some people had issues with hot spots. So just something to think about when it comes to the footbed. All right, so another note about ground feel and the bedrocks. There's not a lot of ground feel here, especially since I've been running in things that are a lot thinner. So 6.5, 8 millimeters, 14 feels super beefy. Now there is still some flexibility and if you're coming from a thick boot or a thick trail run or something like that, these are gonna feel flexible. You're probably gonna feel like you do have a lot of ground feel because they are flexible, definitely more flexible than a Chaco. Um, but I think it's gonna come down to what are you looking for? Are you looking for more protection, something stiffer? Is this some, a new uh, type of running, hiking, that kind of thing that you're getting into? So having something that is stiffer is probably gonna be an easier transition. Only you're gonna be able to really tell, but it's definitely something to note. All right, so last we're gonna talk about the laces. I'm actually a big fan of these laces. They feel really good. I didn't have any issues with hot spots there. Even the wings that come up on the side, those are covered in some kind of a, a fabric, so that works really well. And I actually like the support that that extra rubber gives you on the sides, on the inside and outside of your foot. They're really easy to adjust. I like the little uh, D loop thing, the hook and loop that they got going on. That seems to work really well. Once you set it, you're not really gonna need to change it. The webbing that you slide to strap them on and off, that is really easy to use and I like it a lot. And then also the Velcro on the back. So if you can only afford the regular Karen, don't feel bad. I do think the loops are really cool, but you're gonna get more adjustment with Velcro. So don't write off the Velcro and you're really gonna be able to tailor it into what you need. Something else I noticed, these laces around the ankle and the heel, they seem to ride low compared to my other running sandals that I have, which hasn't been an issue. It does feel like my heel, they were slipping off a little bit, but they never fully came off. So, but definitely a different feeling. Also, I wanna note, I'll throw it in with the laces. You can resole these and the rubber wing on the side is an extension of the outsole. So I don't know if you could take this to a regular cobbler. You might be able to only send them straight to bedrock, but I haven't confirmed this. So something to think about. All right. I also want to touch on the laces, the paracord that they use in between the toes. So for the toe post, that works really well. Uh, no hot spots or issues. I think paracord seems in a rounded toe post like that just seems to work really well for me. Even on other sandals I've tried, I'm a big fan of that. The lacing, the stitches are flush, no hot spots there, irritation. The webbing that they have is nice and wide and provides a lot of support. I touched on it in, earlier in the video, but these laces also seem to be happier running more vertical or parallel with the metatarsal, your first one right there. So that, that's all good. No irritation there compared to other sandals that run more lateral. There is paracord in between all the webbing and that is soft and moves very naturally with your foot. And I'm also a big fan of that. So the lacing is really cool. I, I do like it and it's very convenient to get these on and off and all the materials feel very premium. 
All right, so we're going to wrap up this video. Let's talk about overall pros, cons, um, who is the sandal for, and would I recommend it. Starting out with pros, they're very aggressive. The materials are really nice. I really like the lacing system. It's nice and secure, um, and there's no chafing there. It's easy to adjust, easy to get these on and off. Uh, the footbed is nice. It is. It provides a lot of traction, uh, but sometimes a little too much. <laughs> uh, Overall, I do really like the sandals. When it comes to cons, the big one is just going to be that they're so dang narrow. And for me, running in wider shoes and then also sandals for a while now, they're, I'm just falling off on the side of these, and that gets a little bit irritating. Also, when it comes to the footbed, that was more more traction than I needed right now, and I was getting a lot of blisters. These are probably the worst blisters I've had in quite a while when it comes to running. And I was able to keep wearing the sandals, but I definitely had to adjust the stride and things like that. Who are these sandals for? So if you're someone that's new to the hiking sandal, running sandal game, and your foot's probably still narrow from boots and trail runners and that kind of thing, these would be a good option. Oh man, I feel like I have a bug in my throat. Um, if you're someone that's already been running in sandals for a while and you know your foot's already on the narrow side um, or you know you need something that's going to be more aggressive, I think these sandals would be a really good option. Would I recommend them? I would if you're, all, you know, you fall into those categories of who I recommend them for. If you're newer to the running or if you know that you need something more aggressive. For me, I actually intend on returning these sandals. I just have Chacos if I need a more aggressive sandal. And then also I have my Shamas and the Zero Shoes and the Earth Runners for all the other applications. And these with me falling off and then also all the blisters that I've been getting, I just don't think they're worth it for me and they don't fit in my lineup. But I'm curious if you've tried these, please let me know down in the comments. Do you agree, disagree? Have you tried these versus some of the other big sandal companies out there? So Chaco or Tevas, and which one did you end up going with? Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, it's greatly appreciated and will help grow this tiny channel. Bedrock people, if you happen to see this video on this tiny channel and you need someone to test your sandals, I'm here for you. Just let me know. And that's all I have for now. And I will see you in the next one. Happy trails.